back to another session with the Paintology Drawing app available from the Google Play Store. So this drawing app is <clears throat> different to other drawing apps and hence the reason for showing you these methods of drawing on the uh, live Ustream, Ustream, YouTube stream. sorry. And uh, if you've been following some of my live stream, you will know that um, I adopted a very different approach to all the other drawing apps, which makes a heavy use of tools. And as you know, traditional materials or traditional drawing and painting has been always done with the simplicity of tools. And the reason why they can still go very far in their drawing and painting capability is because the artists have developed techniques and they have more, more skillful in the core skills of art, the fundamental skills, fundamental um, skill sets that are associated with art. And these are what, this is what paintology is about to teach you these methods of uh, techniques so you're not limited by tools you are uh, limited only by your imagination and creativity and so um for those of you who are new to the live stream i'll just quickly go over a few items you can see here this is typically the way i draw oh, let's lose that page i don't know why oh. Okay, sorry about that. I had that page up and I somehow lost it. And there it is. So this is typically the way I would draw and demonstrate my drawing is on this phone that you can see here using my finger. But recently I've been more and more using my stylus and you can also buy a stylus. It doesn't have to be expensive. Anything, uh, you know, cheap, right, is good enough. It's got a, a rubber tip at the end and it's light enough for you or, you know, it feels good for you. That's fine. You can on Amazon, eBay, there. So the other resources I want to quickly point out to you are, okay, first of all, the classroom, Google Classroom. If you're serious about improving your fundamental skills in art, the art skills that are much more like those the skills that you probably feel that are some, some of the artists are born with. You may feel that they're born with, but they're not. These are actually techniques that they have learnt by keeping their mind open to the possibilities and so these skills are actually distilled into this paintology google classroom which is completely free and they're structured so remember this classroom is not designed to get make you more adept with the app although it's designed with the app in mind uh, to show you these techniques, but they're designed to teach you art techniques that have um, relevance and can be applied to any uh, other art mediums, because that's what fundamental skills art techniques are. They can be applied across the board. So you don't confine yourself to one set of tools like most digital artists. They will be confined to one digital application because they are, they are very, they have an affinity for all the tools that they use to create their artwork. So there's, I'll, I'll talk more about the way digital artwork is done, which typically is, um, has evolved into something which most people, you know, move towards, not the way that I'm showing you, the, the, re the, the reason I've, I can do this is because this is my, the app that I created. And therefore, 
I have applied the um, the laws of fundamentals of art to this app. So I won't go into detail. You, you might think this is uh, beyond, uh, you know, goes over your head because you're so used to using, having a different mindset when it comes to digital art. But I'll show you a few things and then you can probably understand. This is a drawing we're going to do. But before I dive into this, so remember, you can go to paintology.com and follow all my live streams ahead of time. Like, for example, the, um, let's see, for example, the uh, ahead of time, for example, the reference image you can download from the page on paintology.com. When you go to a link that's just below the video on the home page, Click on that, you demo live streams, and then you'll find the reference image there. So just to show you how different I draw on, the, on this phone, take a look at some of these drawings. See this one? You could quite easily mistake this one. I did this in portrait. I did this in about 15 minutes. You can quite easily mistake this for something done in traditional materials, right? It's very difficult for people to understand how digital art I do is prepared because that's why it it baffles most people because they just don't they're not used to that kind of drawing method and that's all down to the fact that I have built up core skills which is the intention of the app to teach you those core skills. So let me show you some other stuff here. Yeah. My artworks. Yeah, let me show you some of this artworks I have done. Take a look at this, for example. All right. This is one of my very first what I did a few years ago. And I realized the potential of the digital technology, you know, to uh, to get down, to zoom in, get close to details, and therefore it may enable you to make better photorealistic drawings. The point is, not, not many people are going to get it, and here's the reason why. Because they're all, they're all dependent on tools. Majority of the digital artists are dependent, highly dependent on the tools. They've become accustomed to shading, using a shading tool. They've kind of become accustomed to correcting the lines, auto-correction, or filling in areas autofill, you know, the blurring, blending. That's because it is an artifact of the apps, of the digital applications that are made. <laughs> and the reason why I can draw like that is because I continue to build on my traditional art techniques, the fundamental skills of art. And these techniques are the ones that allow me to make drawing. Oddly enough, uh, I sent this to my cousin and he said, um, I actually thought you were trying to, why is he opening a bag of crisps with a pen? And then he realized it was actually a, a real drawing. This is another one. This was done, which was, uh, I labeled it as well as the fastest, the uh, fastest photorealistic drawing of, in the world. It took me like two and a half, three hours to do. And then if you try to use digital tools, can you imagine how how much access you will need to the digital tools for every little minute detail? In fact, um, it's it's uh, the, the way digital applications are used is is very pocketed. In fact, it's pocketed in the sense that most people think digital art has to be done this way, traditional art has to be. Why? You know, I, I still, uh, you know, uh, think about why does it have to be done that way? And the reason why it's done that way is because the evolution of the digital applications, the drawing application, they were not designed for artists, the general mainstream artists who use traditional materials. They were designed for online, web, illustrations, graphics, logos, posters, online posters, brochures, you name it. And that's why it was designed for anyone 
with little experience of art fundamentals or art techniques to pick up the tools and make those kind of, and it still continues today. And the problem and the thing is that that's why nobody knows that they need to go back, revert back to the way that it was done traditionally. And if you don't go back to that, you won't be able to make drawings such as this that I'm showing you here. Right? There are lots of drawings I've shown here. There's a, like one on the Amazon Fire Tablet. This one I did a couple of months back. So many types of drawings I've done here. This one is the uh, the drawing of the uh, you know the the Marcello who does it with traditional materials, but you can do it with your your hand. There's one I did on the phone. Another one of the froggies, probably the frog you may have seen. So if you look, check out the videos, you'll see that they're in fast mode. But here, even some of you obviously have come to the live stream to learn about this method of drawing. And this is where I show you. I don't know if you attended yesterday's, but I also plan to find a way of talking to the users who, people who diligently come and join me on this class, which I appreciate. So, because you do want to learn. So, let's, uh, I'm not going to spend too much time. I had to move this class earlier because I have a few things I need to do in the morning. So, let's go back to, so now you can see that if you look at those paintings and drawings I did on digital medium, most of them on the phone, you will know, no, you will know that it just, you cannot tell whether it was done by hand, I mean, sorry, by digital or traditional. And that's because I'm using the traditional method of drawing. So how do we do that? Well, let's pick that uh, particular drawing that we have, want to draw, trace image, this one here. Yeah. So how do we do that? Well. Let's think about it. Think about it for a second. What is the digital medium? You know, the fact that I'm able to draw like this is partly because I have a very deep background in technology. In fact, my origins are from technology, not art. Art just happens to be my um, enjoyment factor. And I've coupled both of them together to create this app. So how does it work? Well, let's think about it. Let's First of all, let me explain the reference image here. This is the reference image, and this is, I've opened in trace, it means that I could, I can actually trace this image. And tracing is an exceptionally powerful technique for improving your drawing rapidly. If you want to not trace, just continue to go the, the hard, path of refusing to use trace or doing that, you will find it's a arduous path and it will take you 10, 20 times longer. And there are lots of reasons why it'll take you that much longer to learn. Because I do, you've seen some of, most of the drawings I showed you earlier were freehand drawings. And it's the reason I can get to that level is because I practiced in this mode of drawing. I have been able to build up my skills in terms of fundamental skills, such as tones and values, and also drawing strokes formation. So that's why I don't need any of the drawing tools. And I'm going to show you one tool, one brush, that will be able to make a really excellent drawing of this, this drawing that we're going to do on our phone. So this is the trace, and the trace is very simple. In the top half, is allows you to pick the color picker here on the left and then pick the color yeah, you see that pick the color of the dogs any anywhere you select back is it and then anywhere you go here is the color of of the actual reference image and you apply this to your drawing canvas which sits in the bottom half here Okay, got that. 
So remember, I just move switch to the grayscale without telling you this. But when you switch to the grayscale, it allows giving you a grayscale area, which is fundamental to tones and values. Previously, you never had the ability to understand, appreciate tones like you do now with the digital. And that's the reason I made this device, this grayscale. So to understand shading drawing, that's why pencil drawing is one of the most popular drawing methods in the world because it has only black and white grayscale, not like the color tones that you might need to understand and develop. And that will come when you're practiced in grayscale. So I encourage you to draw everything in grayscale. So, so I imported this image. So you could import any image you like, just like I'm doing here, like using the trace method, and then draw over it. This is excellent practice. Do your portrait, put in black and white, you know, do a portrait of your, of your parents, of friends, family, whatever you want, and then just put it in like this and draw it by hand. And everyone will know you did it by hand, you know, because you're not using any tools. Okay, so start off with that, gradually work your way up and develop these skills. These are inherent to the fundamental skills of art. So the first thing is this brush here. You see, we've got a few more brushes that you can use for various. Remember, the, the mistake that beginners make, they think that every tool should exist under the sun and therefore enhance their drawing. That's a complete myth. You don't, that's like saying to a carpenter, you need all these tools that I'm going to give, provide you and you will be an exceptional carpenter. Come on, that never happens, you know that. That's, that's, that's really, the carpenter has to develop the skill sets and the techniques and master the art of carpentry and workmanship and produce the result. He may never achieve these art techniques and just continue to use the tools, you know, like he's been offered and then end up with a poor piece of wood or whatever, isn't it? It's not the tools that makes the makes the uh, the craft carpenter. It's the it's his techniques. It's what he develops from the use of the tools. It's the same thing with drawing. The use of the tools is what makes you. You don't want to become a slave to the tools. You want to become a master of the tools, not a slave. And the majority of the artists are slave to the tools because they will not go beyond the tool sets in order to draw like me, as I'm going to show you. And I have proven that by posing that question to, to people of digital art or people of any art in nature. And they just uh, say they do digital art. And if they want to make it natural and... Uh, and do all the the hairline. They have to go switch to manual and do it by, <coughs> and uh, put the hairlines in there. The eye, the natural strokes of the eyes, and you know the distorted uh, lines of the eye. And, <laughs> and so, why do you start off in the first place, drawing like that? <laughs> Unfortunately, they never come back. But I do hope that they check out Paintology. So the first thing we're going to do is, this is rapid drawing. So remember, what I'm going to show you is really rapid drawing. And rapid drawing is all about trying to, let's pick the color picker here. First, am I going to use that? Yeah. So I'm going to do the background first, really rapidly. So I pick the color picker. Right. Pick the color picker and then I'm just going to keep that line there and then pick the color picker. Yeah. Notice that these are the tones. This is where you get really familiar with what tones are because look what I'm doing. I'm actually, even I'm ignoring the texture and I'm looking at these darker tones that are appearing on the left. This is what I'm doing. And I got my line at 100%. 
and 15%, okay? All right, there you are. So here, so all manually done. I'm not using or diving into any tool. There's a reason why Paintology has been developed this way with the canvas grayscale in mind, right? Let's say, let me give you an example, right? Let's say you're making a drawing and it had a total of 10,000 strokes, okay, of your drawing, right? And if you're color tool is behind two strokes of your pair finger two presses of the button that means the six six thousand of those strokes that you do have, are accessing the color palette do you see what i'm saying if you have it right on your menu like you have it now Right, what does that mean? It means that you have more strokes to your drawing. This is well, this is something digital artists ignore because they're too busy giving you digital tools that you can go, aha, this brush is exactly what I need. Aha, this blending is exactly what I need so I don't have to blend. So I'm gonna show you how to blend much more quicker than using the tools and way more powerful than tools and i'll show you in a minute but let me just finish the background in fact you know what i'm going to do i'm going to carry this color so i'm going to go to my canvas carry this color all the way to the right i'm going to try and mask out that wall so I'm, gonna, I'm now picking my colors, right? Okay, see that? So I'm picking my colors here. And then I'm gonna pick this here. Right. And don't worry about what it looks like exactly, okay? So I'm gonna pick the background continue with the background colors now as i have which is the wall at the back All right so i've moved the trace bar above and then the wall is going to go all the way to the right because i'm ignoring that big wall there i don't want i don't seem to be don't enjoy that wall being there here there so i'm gonna just pick that and i'm going to take out that white so I'm going to carry this black. So keep your drawings as simple when you start. Don't try and overdo the detail. Again, this is your artwork. You can do whatever you feel like. It's entirely up to you. If it makes you feel comfortable doing something, then do it. Because that's, that's the person you are, isn't it? Okay, so what we have here, then we're going to take a look and see what we have, yeah? So the, see, notice that I've taken it down and just extended the background all the way, okay? Now, now we can go into and do the block coloring of the, the, uh, the dog, right? So I'm going to reduce the brush a just to a little bit so I can get more detail because the the dog is a little more refined and compared to the background so I want to be able to pick pick the details some of the details not all of it remember I'm still at the early stage of the drawing process it's something that I talk about in art now, not many people are familiar with the drawing process because it's not until we have had digital that you can especially with the way I'm showing you that the drawing process can be more technically defined previously as compared to the drawing process of, let's say, traditional materials. Think about it. You've been, you've gone to YouTube, you've seen artists at work, 
and they start off with a blank canvas and then eventually they get to a piece of artwork that just leaves you completely mesmerized you know thinking how the did they do that and they they've have they do it through what's called a drawing process yeah the drawing process is unique to them it is one of the reasons why it's not very easy to actually put it into words or explaining to students the drawing process yeah so even if you look up google the drawing process you'll see very few few topics related to art most of it is actually do with industrial some kind of industrial mechanism what the drawing process is really nothing to do with art and what i found is that and i found the reason why many people cannot talk about the drawing process and i have a blog post called the the drawing process one of the first blogs so you should check it out please do check it out because this very it's core to the way that I draw it's very important to the way you, I draw and it's one of the reasons why you can improve your drawing way more rapidly than other techniques look what I'm doing color picker always picking out the tones and this enhances my brain towards the color picker really really does home my my appreciation of tones that are going on on the reference image yeah so the drawing process is something i'm going to show you up let me just complete this block coloring and i'm going to show you what that means and then it will become clear to you and then i can you can better understand why the drawing process is not easily replicated because if it was easily done Believe me, all traditional artists would go on about it, but they don't. Have you heard them say, you know what, I'm going to show you my drawing process. And they have vaguely the touch on it, but they wouldn't be able to explain in full detail what it is. But you can with the Paintology app, and I'm going to show you how you can. So let me just finish this. So I think I've done a good job of the uh, dog. Oh, I've got to do his feet, isn't it? Yes, we can't, we can't have his feet chopped off. These nice little feet, paws, I should say. So notice I'm just refining a little bit of the edges here. So. This is doing the other. And don't overthink. If you're beginning out painting and drawing, please don't overthink about drawing, okay? Let's go here. This is what we've got here, okay? And I'm not going anywhere beyond that, so I'd probably just finish. Pick up the color picker. <coughs> this is our drawing, yeah, okay? So is what we have here and that's one of the drawing process okay and the drawing process means it's the process of drawing think of the drawing process <clears throat> as the drawing an artist any artist pick any artist who creates something at the end after showing you starting from nothing or blank canvas or a blank piece of paper, right? And then takes you all the way to the finished creation, right? That is the drawing process. Between there, zero, all the way to finish is the drawing process. And the reason why they can't show you that traditionally is because it's exceptionally hard for an artist. So I mix this color here, I mix this color here. They'll have to continuously do more talking than doing and they'll have to take pictures snapshots of pictures every time if they want another user to take hold of their mindset and try and learn from them 
And that's just near impossible because what they're doing is they're going to try and break it down bit by bit to the level that someone, anyone can follow. And to do that, they will have to start, stop, start, stop all the way. And that will take them, and by drawing, that will take them two hours, will take them maybe 60 hours or even more. And they're not prepared to sit through that. How many people will come and say, yeah, that's what I need in order to be able to complete the old way. And that's what they need, essentially, because it's unique to the artist. He needs to, he or she needs to put the exact steps they're taking when they've reached a particular level. So here is the drawing process in Paintology, which makes it clearly easy for you to appreciate how I'm building this up. And I'm, and I'm pressing on this drawing process because I, I press on this drawing process because the drawing process is fundamental to drawing. And it is what takes someone up learning, their learning capability accelerates their learning capability, okay? So the next thing is I'm going to blend the uh, background. So that's the next step of the drawing process. If I had not come here, I would not be able to show you that blending or the next step of the process. So how I'm going to blend line and then shade. So I keep it 100% and I've gone at 26%, okay? And then I'm simply going to take one of the, the... Notice what I'm doing. I'm taking the light color and blending it into the back. Okay? That's all I'm doing right now. I'm just blending it. Kept it 100%. I'm not doing anything complicated now. And you can follow this easily. Okay? So I'm just blending the background here. Right. The shade brush is like what it says, it's like a shading. I, I discovered that when I was doing a painting of Will Smith, a drawing of Will Smith. And then I was like intrigued with how I was able to achieve this. And I realized that. It, it almost replicated the pencil-like drawing. This, this shade brush, right, what it does, it's going to make that the, um, the background more diffused. And uh, if you've seen some of my water droplets painting, you'll see I've diffused it very nicely. Look, I'm kind of, so grab any of the colors and just... I've got it 20%, 100%, okay? Grab any of these colors. Okay, see that? So, so I grabbed using the color picker of a darker color and just stretched it out, okay? And then I'm going to, with the color of that, just stretch it out you know, like this, yeah? Look at that, see? That's all it is. Just diffusing the background because the object, which is the dog, is the most important central focus, the most important piece in the art, isn't it? After all, right? So don't be afraid, just do it like that. I was, um, I was wanting to watch um, the Bob Ross is one of the old, I think Owen Wilson or what's his name, the one a guy, this famous Hollywood actor who played Bob Ross and he had a film out and I was going to watch that yesterday, it's paint I think it was called, <clears throat> because um, Bob Ross came on, I usually let the TV run while I'm doing a drawing. Bob Ross came, and I thought I was going to watch him because he gave the impression that he he was the one who brought the love of drawing to a lot of people, love, love of painting, I should say, because he didn't draw as much. <coughs> 
And then uh, I thought, this is probably the same love and passion that I'm developing slowly by showing you this, right? It's just so much more fun. I mean, I can get up early in the morning and do this, and I can probably make do this for half the day without tiring. Okay, so let's look at that now. Uh, look how the the dog suddenly stood out, the pet dog, because I've diffused the background. This is what you can do. In fact, I have to, I have to give thanks to my daughter for showing me the, uh, the line and the shade brush technique of blending. She needs to be credit for that. She knows how to do blending. Trust me, she's really good at this. Okay, oops, no, let's go. Okay, so that's what we have here. Look how it's the it's sort of blended out. Let's pick that. Look how it's blended out, and the dog looks very pronounced. It's it's exactly the way the photos are now taken in portrait mode. Have you noticed that some of the uh, Photos have something called the portrait mode. Yep. This portrait mode defocuses the background and allows you to uh, focus on the actual portrait. Have you noticed that? I've used it in a few of the weddings I went to and uh, and I've found that it makes up for a very lovely picture and people are very appreciative of the, paint, the, the uh, photos I take with my phone. So now that we've done that, let's take a look at this character here, right? So we're just going to, we've done the background, and we're just going to go into tiny details here, okay? So actually, let me save this. Uh, I'm going to save this, okay? And then I'm going to pick it up again, because I'm working on a very prototype of the app, and you won't have this problem when you install the app. I'm going to pick it up again, trace mode, the tool mode. Oops, that was not the one. Discard that. This was the one. Okay. So I'm going to pick it up again. I'm just working on a prototype. So I'm just cleared the memory. You don't, you know, you can ignore me what I'm saying. This won't make sense to you. Anyway, so here it is. Now we, we've got two ways to go about this, right? Usually I go about it like this. This, this is where your some of your art techniques will come about. And I think some of you will be probably quite good at doing it this way. So now I reduce the brush size. And I'm going to, of course, go back to the line brush, right? I'm going to reduce this. So pay attention to what I've got. 3% three, three right? So I'm going to pick this color. The reason I'm doing this is because there's a very good reason why I'm doing this is because if I go halfway here, it's really hard for me to see all the details. But now I have the option to look at this and then try and replicate so even 2% is too big. So I'm going to go to 1.5, let's say. And then I'm going to try and pick the color picker of that eyebrow. Trust me, do this. It'll be really good for you. Please, please do this. And then pick that tone there. Just shaping the eye. Look how I'm shaping the eye here. Very quickly. I'm not going to spend too much time. And then I'm picking out these tones. And trust me, these tones are what gives this, this image, shape, color, volume. So always pick the color tones there. You can see that that tone is light, very light. And then you have another light tone there, right? And then you have this tone here. Just go there. 
and then you have this wonderful tone here. And if you don't know what, how much to do, take it down and just, just so you can see the posh, the, the reference image, okay? That's all you need to do. Okay, there. So even 1.5 is way too small. I mean, too big for this. But we don't care because we, we're doing this very quickly. You can see here. And then there is a bit of that light gray that goes there. Okay. This is all about tonal. Tone work, nothing else. And then that's light here. Let's put that in there. And then there's a little light here, white here. Let's put that in there. And then he's got this wonderful gray tone that comes across there. And then he's got this lovely gray tone that comes across there. So this is this is uh, this is the one of the portrait drawings I did earlier of the famous Bollywood Rish. Rish I forgot his name. Rishi hit here, the one, the famous dancer. See that, the light tones there? This really does improve your appreciation and then of the tones that are going on at small depth. And this is how you create the drawings. Look, I'm not using any tools. Like, look, look how quickly we created that eyes. So it looks so realistic, doesn't it? And now we go to the right eye, left eye, I should say. Do the same thing, okay? So we've got, we're gonna, we're gonna go. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing. Get the black turn here and then form the shape. Then form the shape that you think, and then just do the shape. The the nothing complicated. Just do the shape. The black toes there, <laughs> and then this really enhances your ability and uh, tuning your brain to the tones. You're not really doing any specific drawing as such. If you can't do this, you really need to do the paint by numbers tutorials that are set up on the app, right? You go to, I'll show that to you at the end. Right? It's so easy to do this. Right? Do the colors there. Then do the light colors here. Okay, and then you have this very light tone there. And then you have this black tone here that goes in there across there, and then you have the then you have this lovely grey tone here. Right, and then you have this black going over across there, and then this black going across here and then you have this black it's not even black i'm picking the colors and this here okay and then you have a very a fair dark tone it encircles the eye okay and then you have this Look, look at these tones. Just add these little tones here. Look at these tones, lovely tones. That adds to the depth. Now let's see both of his eyes. Look at that, how his eyes are now popping out compared to the rest. And then we're gonna do the hair. You can see there, that is little 
very little hair there. And then while we're at it, we can so we're at it, we can just right, then we can just fix that. Look at that, these. Look at this one. Let's do this. Right? Let's do that. You can see your drawing, my draw my drawing, the actual drawing, and then we're just gonna create that. Okay. Just try and replicate the areas. Just get a feel for the shape. Nothing more. It doesn't have to be perfect, okay? That's the problem is most beginners think it has to be perfectly aligned. No, not so. That's why natural photos natural photos look like look natural. That's all it is. That wasn't great, so I'm going to try and do some of this fur fur that's showing up here. And then see that there? See, it's sort of a furry direction. It's going like that, right there. Look, so that's not white. That's actually grey. You'll be surprised. Okay, and then here, yeah. Look, look at that. Just makes a difference, doesn't it? And then some light tones here. It just comes across. And then some very light tones here. So we're just doing his head really quickly. Then some very light tones here on top of his black, lovely colour of his fur. It's a good reason why we like pets, isn't it? Right, so pick these colours. So the colour picker does everything. Right. See that that grey there? You might want to capture and shape it. That's all I'm doing. I'm not using a brush, the line brush still. This is all I'm doing. Capturing the texture and shape using the same brush. That's all I'm doing. With practice, that's what you will do as well. Yeah, you keep practicing this way. Trust me, it's a perfect, wonderful way of drawing and you'll be really, really taking your skill level to a whole new level. There's some black going on there as well. This, this kind of black that's going on, so you can put that in there. And then let our eyes do the resolving. And then here, look at that color. It's a different color. Right? Pick these colors. Colors are beautiful. It's the reason why Bob Ross was able to make this wonderful mountain, snow peak mountains. There. So just shaping it, texture, nothing different. And then here, right, the white, it looks white, but it's in fact not white at all. And then this nostrils, I'm going to do the nostrils. I'm not worried about getting it exactly right. Right, it's got a, it's got a grayish around the nostrils. And then parts of it, you see his parts of it? There. And it's got an even light. Okay. We just want to let the eye do the work. Yeah, you do that. Just move back and forth. So what am I doing? And this is why I can show you in digital. Uh, click it on the bottom trace bar and moving back and forth between my drawing and the drawing. This is a very important technique I'm showing you in developing your art skills. You're looking at the reference image directly without even having to turn your head and look at a picture or anything. This because the reference image is directly beneath your drawing. 
Okay, I'm looking at that, and then I'm taking some of the textures, colors, down to my own drawing. I have that option. You won't have that ability in any any other medium except in digital like this. Right, so I'm going to take some of that color and just create the nostrils. That's all I'm doing. There, it's a bit bigger. And then watch the shape of the nostrils. So it gives the impression it's the nostrils, right? There, is there anything else here? Yeah, I can see another line of the nostrils here. And then here I can see that there is, it's the uh, bottom of the nostrils. But here we can see this small black right there. Gives that impression of so then then there's that darker grey or the white grey that looks like a tash and then it's got some light grey going on here and that lightish and his beautiful white fur going on there okay. And then what we have here, it's got a smile, I think. I think that's probably why pet owners love dogs, have a constant smile. And their loyalty, of course, isn't it? Now we can see how quickly we've created the soups there. Quickly we've created this. Look, see how quickly that was created, the nostrils and everything. And we've now you can see that's a drawing process. We're going to do the next step, which is the steps tell you it spurs you on. Let's so say this it will spur you on to the next step of the drawing, which is basically tells you, hey, you've done the head, looks great. Now your body and the legs, they're just not coming together these are the processes that spurs the way the artist thinks and now that you have the digital medium yeah, you have a much more powerful way of learning the drawing process okay so let's just keep going in that direction here can you see that that was uh, that bit that we had here just fill it in and shape it and then once we've shaped it you'll see that so here is something I'm going to show you which I would not necessarily show you that notice that these color is now becoming and set back slightly in the focal plane meaning it's actually diffused compared to the the prominent nose and eyes look at that it's because the focal point of the cameras this is if you know photography this focal air area was set back it was very small the focal length so in that way this collar even though it's part of the dog is more diffuse well you know we can do the same we'll take it to 50 percent and that means the our our i'll show you what happens at 50 percent let's take that black Right, and then watch what would happen. See, well, it has somehow diffused, made that look a little bit diffused. And I'm going to take it back even more 20%, and you'll be able to see it. Okay, now let's do this this black here, and you'll see how it diffuses. See now how that diffusion occurs. Pick it up a bit. Yeah, have you seen that? How does that diffusion? It's almost like it's diffused, right? And then look, we're going to do this gray and make it look diffused. Why not? We've got that ability, so let's do it. Right there. And then we don't have anything there, so we're going to have the gray here, right? 
Give it the same look and feel. And then look at that, just it's diffused here. Yeah? Look, this looks like it's set back, it's not like a distinct. See the outer edges there? It's not distinct, it looks like set back. And we're doing the same thing with the, the density. This is where the density comes into it, comes into play. So, again, here it's the same as what we did with shading. So let's take it up a bit. Too much density. You'll see how that works. This is the way you keep create a diffused look to it. Look. See that? See how that the density is like because you're adding more strokes and it's giving that that sort of defocused look. That's what we're looking for, the defocused look. This you can apply to any type of drawings. Right here. There. See? It's giving that, even though there's tones there which you can't see, but we are, because I'm learning as well all the time, you know? That's what the purpose of this is to show you that even even having some skill sets like I do have, I'm still always open to learning. And you'll see how this diffused look makes the pet appear more prominent and the head having, this is why this picture is even on this picture has won some acclaim, I believe. Right, but we're drawing that. Look at the dark here. So again, look at that. And then we'll go through to this side here. Right there. Right there. See that? See if we've managed to achieve some of that diffused look. We haven't quite finished, but we'll get there eventually, yeah? So let's save that. And now we can see that we have to tackle the rest of the body. Okay, so let's do that. I don't want to, like I said, I'm on a tight schedule here. So I'm going to try and go through this really quickly. Right there. Have a look there. Got that diffused. Let's just make that somehow give that a diffused look uh, and add our own touch to it. Right? So we're keeping it the same and then just turning the this the collar into a sort of slightly diffused look about it here, right? And you can change the brush size. I'm not changing the brush size. In fact, I could change it because I'm in a larger area. Okay, here. So I can change it, right? giving a more diffused look to it. It's not quite Remember, it's not quite white, it's a little gray. Down here. That, that's it. So, and so here, what we can do is we'll go into a smaller brush, but for the time being, I'm just going to fix that. So I'm going to go back to a smaller and probably a bit higher on that and make sure we've got those shape of the legs right otherwise it looks like just come out of the 
veterinary surgeon and an operation with his leg and that. My daughter says I have to, uh, I have to add more jokes to my sessions. So that was my first joke of the day. And then here. And then let's see what we have here. So we can change that up a bit, change the size up a little bit, and then take that and then have a look at that. That's actually quite, that's not quite the color I had in mind. And so that was the wrong color, actually. I picked my color, I think. And then we can take the brush size down again when I'm working in a smaller area. And then just, if, we can, if you have the, if you're not quite sure of the shape, put it back in the mid position and start doing those outlines, yeah? That's what we're gonna do. And then take it up a bit. Just this really helps me to appreciate that I can rely on the reference image for this finer drawing detail I'm doing now. Yeah. Okay, let's see what we have here. Wow, that dog is coming out nicely, isn't it? So now let's look at the right side here. Can you see that the right side is not quite looking like the way it should? It has this the feature of the body that just... So let's take it down, because I don't want it to be too pronounced. It's diffused, very subtle. And then it goes all the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the adjacent color and then leave that as it is and then just shape it. That's all I'm doing. Look, just shaping it. And then that's round, isn't it? So pick the adjacent color and just shape it. Right, pick the adjacent color and just shape that. That's all I'm doing. And now if you look at it, you'll see that this dog has much better shape. Yeah, much better shape. And now on the left side, you can see there is some issues going on, isn't it? It looks like... Uh, He's got some smoke coming out of his rear side, isn't it? We need to change that. And the reason why that is like that is because we have, we've been trying to use the background and we've already shaped the background. So we're going to take that up and just take that away because that's not part of that dog features, right? Remove that. And just diffuse it into the if you can't get it quick enough just take it up because that's the color of the background that we have right. Right there. and then 
sin here. You see, I was trying to pick up the background image. I thought it was part of its body, but it was not. And then take, remember I've got the, the, the other color there, which I would merge to here. Right. And then let's see if it's rear hind here. Yes, it must there, isn't it? So what's happening here? It looks like his back paw. The, we've got to shape that, so we've got to decide how we're going to make that work, right? So that's not quite happening to to the way we want. So let's take some of that the white here and let's let the white be its hind leg, right? Okay. Let that do its work here, and then maybe just give the impression. Let's see what happens, right? We don't know yet. Let's see if that does something. It's sort of, isn't it? But it's still not quite there, is it? So how am I going to do this? This is getting a little strange, sort of. Let's try and get that, make that darker. And assume that his shape of his paws Just better, isn't it? It's pause. Yes, I think we're winning here. See, there's always a way where there's a will, there is a way. Just like that. There. I think we've done it, haven't we? What do you think? Let's move that here. I think we've done it, isn't it? And then let's move this gray here that we, that we had. And let's blend it in here. And then let's get that black. So we need to take that down. That black should be just coming in. All right. I think we've managed to do it. It's almost like leaning over, isn't it? And then let's take some of that white. Don't know what. Right, and then we can now diffuse this the white bit here, and then we could do all kinds of things here. So we've got that, take that down white, take the density up. Do you see how the density is working? I'll give you, if you look and if you're still not sure how this density works, you need to go to the Google Classroom and really understand because I'm just showing you the techniques here which you may not grasp right away but you can see how it works right oops I'm, why am I picking the wrong color We see his face, we need to just diffuse that. So here is a good way of diffusing that that black. Can you see that black? That's like I'm gonna just diffuse it. See that? 
and you can diffuse and then you can diffuse that the gray that he's got here so give it some bit more like like it's not a blocky splodgy image Notice I'm spending more time on my drawing, okay? That's a good thing. That's a really good sign. And then just go around here. And then here's some grey here. That's here. That's it. Let's have a look. I think we did a really good job here, isn't it? And he obviously doesn't seem like he's he's floating in air, but that's all right, isn't it? So let's uh, take that down. And uh, just get his paws there, his lovely white. Right there. And if we don't like it, we can always make it retreat. And then, here's something I'm going to do here. This is the beauty of drawing, is that I could... Look at that, so cute looking, isn't it? Look at that, ears, can you see? This is part of the drawing process. As you continue to draw your... Your skill level has produced something on the drink. Excuse me. And this skill level has made the drawing take it to shape in the drawing process to a level where you can say, you know what, I can see defects now. And it's not defects. It's basically you know you you need to know where you need to go. All right. It gives you direction where you need to go, right? Let me diffuse that. So remember I was diffusing it with the shade brush, but now I'm using the density setting of the line to diffuse some of the areas here. Can you see it? Right, with the lower setting here. Then here. And then one is left here. Can you see there? That's not quite done. It's because we've got so better at making the dog look so nice that everything else stands out like a sore thumb. I think what we can do is this pause there on the rear pause. Not looking so good. So what I'm going to do is Take that down a bit, right, the brush. Then I'm going to take some of that grey, just bring that down. Looks like he hasn't got he hasn't gone upward. So what does it look like? It's looking good, isn't it? Although I think you can get away with saying that his rear rear let me see if i can do something with that more and let's see if we can take some of that white and just take it in more like giving the impression that it's, it's got more at the back and then maybe what we can do is Take some of that black and take it down as though there's something going on at the back. Right there. Although you can't tell what that is. So I think I'm going to have to say this is probably as best I can do. And let's write down paintology here. Paintology, 
drawing here and then so what do you think uh, please comment and let me know and see if you followed along to this nice little short course uh, just took us uh, just over an hour and what did we do well i broke down this processing drawing process steps block coloring with the background and then switching to shade brush to diffuse the background so now we have the dog that really stands out i mean look at this whole thing that dog looks like he's in the environment but here in our drawing it looks like he really is the center of attention here isn't it and whatever is in the background we can let our imagination go wild with that and then we managed to do the contrasting colors and i showed you how to reduce the brush size and go back to the line brush in order to do the rest of his of the head you know we first focused on the head and then we and then we created the diffused look that we did earlier with the line setting of the density setting here this is all it is no other tools and then that's why we're able to make drawings as rapidly like this okay so i hope you enjoyed this short lesson and i hope you've learned something and i'd love to hear some feedback so please subscribe and i will be continuing with another live session in nine o'clock on nine gpgmt which is like over an hour away and that's on the produced channel so i hope to see you there soon thank you bye bye